Jim Henson's various creations throughout the decades he worked in film and TV were pretty out there to say the least. Some definitely fell into the experimental category, and with experiments there are inevitable failures. that perhaps don't have the desired effect when you put them on a show like Sesame Street. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Nobody. You know, I've um, I've learned to walk around inside my own head. Fortunately for me, he's not literally nobody, as I wouldn't have much to talk about then, but he's in fact a Muppet character that you probably haven't heard of, for reasons that will soon become clear. Now then, a count of ten. The character that became known as Nobody was originally named Limbo, consisting of just two eyes and a mouth made entirely of string and being controlled by two puppeteers using invisible wire. The puppet was usually performed live in front of a pre-recorded film that was generally either projected or composited behind the character. You know, I'm an idea man. The origins of Nobody can be traced back to the late 1950s or early 60s in an episode of Sam and Friends, Henson's first ever TV show. Though due to it being a local series that only aired in Washington DC, most of the original episodes were never recorded, and some that were have since been lost. Thankfully, the segment featuring Nobody's debut survives, which actually turns out to be a commercial for the show's sponsor, SK Meats. SK Frying Chicken is the fairest chicken of them all. Now, you've heard me refer to him as Limbo earlier, and this is what Jim Henson originally named the character. It comes from the term used in film and TV to describe a relatively empty or nondescript background, which were often used in Muppet productions to keep the audience's focus on the performance of the characters. Alternatively, Limbo can refer to the supposed abode of the souls of unbaptized infants. What the? Are they trying to tell us this thing's unholy? Moving on, the term generally means to be in a period of waiting, when you're neither here nor there kind of thing. And while you could argue that the character has a deep meaning that represents the void between life and death or some waffle, it's most likely just named after the production term. As mentioned previously, the character is often referred to as Nobody, perhaps a play on words, as he literally has no body, just a face. This seems to originate from the character's appearance in a short titled I'm Nobody. You can see right through me, I'm nobody. Other names include Lineface in the pilot for a proposed show titled Mad Mad World from 1962 that was unaired, whilst Henson himself simply coined the character Floating Face Thing in an appearance on The Mike Douglas Show in 1966. Anyway, with naming shenanigans out of the way, why is this character so interesting? Well, the most notable thing he appeared in was The Organised Mind, and in this shot, he appears slightly more unnerving. Basically, Limbo is composited onto a blank human face here, which makes this version visually the creepiest looking version of the character, in my opinion. It just has that uncanny valley vibe, which is quite impressive to be fair, considering we're looking at some rubber bands on strings. But the film explores the inner workings of the human brain, as we are guided around it by Limbo's own self-conscience, once again, voiced by Jim Henson. It's where things like breathing and heartbeat and glands are controlled. It's, it's kind of like plumbing. It's not very interesting. But if you keep going, you cross into the cerebrum. And that's where all your thoughts are. This really soft-spoken, almost whispering voice has been described by many as disturbing. But in a way, I think it's actually kind of relaxing. Is that weird? You know, when I first came to my cerebrum here, there were thoughts scattered all over. The place was a mess. Whole mathematical formula, bits of poetry, and telephone numbers were all mixed up together. 
was terrible. Seriously though, Henson was busting out ASMR like half a century before it was conceived. Dude really was ahead of his time. There are however some parts of this that are intentionally disturbing, such as Limbo exploring his dark thoughts and fears, as he becomes more distressed in response to various images along the lines of horror and borderline nudity. You want to see my evil thoughts? I keep them over here, in this part of my brain. I also spotted that in one frame, the word help is written, which is unsettling enough, but it's during a part where the character is pretty relaxed perhaps suggesting that he's not coping mentally at all. This later culminates in his mind going <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah, same, really. Oh, and how could I forget this thing? It's literally named The Nightmare, and that really speaks for itself? This was all introduced under The Muppets branding, by the way. Disney probably wouldn't approve, but these characters are officially Muppets, which is kind of hilarious to think about. Regardless, this was premiered to a live audience on the aforementioned Mike Douglas show, and they seemed to love it, with the film even being declared Oscar-worthy by the man himself. So what's the logical next step for Jim Henson, being the mad lad he was? Oh yeah, let's, let's put this guy on Sesame Street. The most ironic part is that he has a different voice here, and it's probably ten times more terrifying than Henson's rendition. This was apparently provided by William Mercer, and the guy sounds like he's on the verge of becoming the Green Goblin. <laughs> and to truly cement this nightmare fuel into toddler's brains, let's make him teach counting with suspenseful sound effects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think maths has ever been a particularly popular subject, so it's no wonder that this tipped kids over the edge. As you can imagine, this mortified parents and the character has never appeared since. Although an abstract creation, perhaps Limbo was just too out there for the demographic of Sesame Street. What makes the character seem much less ominous, however, is his cameo appearance in the 1970 TV special The Muppets on Puppets, which provides an in-depth look at the construction and operation of various puppets, with Limbo being broken down into his core components by none other than Jim Henson himself. This is a character that we developed a couple of years ago. It's something that you wouldn't ordinarily think of as a puppet, it's just made out of a few pieces of foam rubber worked by strings to a glove on my hand. And it can become things like a bird, like that. Uh, and puppets can be as simple or abstract, or they can be very complicated. Nowadays, if you encounter Limbo at all, it'll probably be in a YouTube video showing off the top 10 creepiest characters from children's programs, which carries a sense of irony in itself. A count of 10. And whilst I can't deny the character's out of place appearance in Sesame Street would have scared the shit out of me as a child, it's fascinating to look back at the origins of Nobody, who, despite the implications of his name, is perhaps the most unique Muppet that there has ever been. Life won't recognize me. I'm Nobody. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and maybe even leaving a super thanks down below. Thanks for watching. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.